What is religion and why do we need a new one? For many people, the word religion brings up a lot of emotions, and if you look around at the behaviour of some religious people, you understand why. In a recent census in Australia, where Vita was founded, over 60% of the public ascribed to some form of religious belief. However, if you look down the list of those religions, you'll see that not one of them is nature-based. Not one has saving the planet or looking out for the well-being of humans at their heart. Almost without exception, these religions are devoted to worshipping God, not nature or humanity. So if you want to prevent biosphere collapse and the extinction of the human race, you might think that religion is not really up to the task. Maybe religion simply isn't the right tool for the job. But rather than ditching the concept of religion, why not create one that is fit for purpose? A religion that is suited to the times. A religion designed to remedy the needs of the humans and nature in the Anthropocene. But first, what is religion? Now there are many answers to that question, and I'm not going to list them all, but instead I'll cut to the functional definition that Vita uses, that of the Australian government. In Australia, religious institutions like Vita are registered through the Australian Charities and Not-for-Profit Commission, the ACNC. For the ACNC, religion involves the following. A belief in a supernatural being, thing or principle and the acceptance of canons of conduct that give effect to that belief. In this sense, supernatural is something beyond evidence or scientific proof. It exists only in belief and faith. Now you can see how the run-of-a-mill church fits the ACNC's definition of a religion. They believe in a God, a concept unprovable and reliant on faith, and they have canons of conduct that give effect to that belief. Thou shalt not kill, go to church to worship, and so on. But by the same definition, supporting a sports team might also be regarded a religion. Consider the Rabbitohs. The Rabbitohs is an Australian rugby team and the followers are known for being fanatical devotees. For the supporters, the Rabbitohs are a supernatural force. They are sacred above and beyond all the other teams, but not in any way that can be assessed through analysis of data. It's a belief. Sure, you can say it's because they won this game or that, it's the colour of the jersey, or they're an institution having been around for over a hundred years. Or maybe it's because they've got Maximus, Russell Crowe, as one of the owners. You could tally all that up, and it still would not explain the enthusiasm that the followers have for the team. They simply see the Rabbitohs as a sacred, supernatural force. And the Rabbitohs' followers accept canons of conduct to give effect to that belief. They wear the sweater and the scarf, they go to the games, they cheer when one of the team scores and they bang those rubber hand things together and if somebody blags off the rabbitos in the clubhouse well you can imagine what sort of practice that would initiate the point about the rabbitos is this using the acnc's definition you could put forward an argument that the rabbitos are a religion hypothetically if they submitted the paperwork and the argument was accepted then the rabbitos like christianity and vita could actually become a registered religious institution but that would also require them to be a non-profit organisation. So maybe the shareholders would rather remain secular and for profit. I tell you this story to try and open up your thinking about what religion is. It's many other things besides, but I want you to understand the way that Vita uses the word religion. It's a belief in something you can't prove, in this case, Vita Planeta, and the things that you might do if you believe that. And another important point is that you don't need to have a God to have a religion. That's referred to as a non-theistic religion, but you do need your supernatural. For people who care about the planet, there is nothing more supernatural than nature. It's been around for over three billion years, a quarter of the age of the universe. It grows everywhere and it's so diverse. In sure, Earth system science, the planetary boundaries and all that, that's scientific. But when you start reading Gaia theory about homeostasis and the idea that all the living things on Earth behave in the manner of a single living organism, and you start to test the ability of science to deliver proofs. And if you take a step beyond Gaia and into Vitae Planeta, you are well within the realm of belief in a supernatural entity. And what Vita has done is to bring together some existing ideas about humanism and the living planet, throw in a few new ones, create a narrative that brings it all together, put a structure around it, and to define some canons of conduct, some practices. And in this way, Vita has become a new religion devoted to the living planet and a sustainable human civilization and about time too.